All right, guys. Well, I can't look through the camera, so I don't know if my head's being chopped off or not. But we have, uh, after a gloomy start, we have one more gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times, in the collapse of everything, where we have made it to the fall of 2024. Uh, the summer of 2024 is behind us. Let the fall begin. And I guess we have like five solid days of rain uh, hitting tomorrow. So, uh, let us enjoy one last peak of sunshine here on this glorious literal fall day. That would be Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. And, uh, guys, I know that I just did, uh, a rant on the uh, fires in the Amazon rainforest a few days ago from, who was that from, from Amazon Watch. Uh, but... I, I, I don't know, it, it, something about the, the, the Amazon rainforest has, the collapse of the Amazon rainforest has been one of, is it, I don't guess I should call it my favorite collapse, but I think in a lot of ways the collapse of the Amazon rainforest is certainly one of the most tragic uh, collapses unfolding on this planet. You know, we've got the coral reefs in the in the Arctic and, and, and everything else, but something about the Amazon rainforest. And so we're actually, uh, since it is my birthday, I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do today, and that's bring you uh, another report from our old buddy over on that lefty channel counterpunch, Robert Hunziker, who I've had the pleasure of interviewing a couple of times. Uh, I think Robert Hunziker has done an excellent job of uh, spelling out, well, spelling it out right here in his latest essay, Amazon Death Rattle. Amazon Death Rattle, which is exactly what we're hearing from the Amazon. Take it away, Robert. The Amazon rainforest is in deep trouble. Labeling it a crisis, however, seems too hackneyed and not descriptive enough because the devastation is beyond description. The magnificent rainforest is morphing into a tinderbox that is trapped in the worst drought of all time, according to Map Biomass, an all-time record amount of land is charred and smoldering as 180,000 fires uh, this year, over 50,000 of them current, light up Brazil, potentially threatening major cities Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. An estimated 20% of the Brasilia National Forest burned just last week. And uh, he links you over to that article on uh, AB, good old ABC News, which I remember seeing. What is happening in the Amazon may strike people as routine fires that news outlets have been covering for years. Nothing could be further from the truth. Historically, there is nothing 
routine about this. Today's fires are an unnerving example of a trend that is unique to modern day society. Historically, over millennia, the Amazon rainforest did not experience massive take down wildfires that incinerated all life forms. Um, then uh, he keeps quoting. Anyway, what I like about Robert is uh, he uh, pretty much everything he says at the end of the paragraph, he has the source. I will put the link on here if you want to find the sources and dig deeper into this, but I'm not going to sit here and read all of the sources that he, the source material. Here's one quote from, uh, uh, from uh, North Carolina State University. Quote, the Amazon evolved for millions of years without fire. Its plants and animals lack the necessary adaptation. In making matters far worse than any previous fires and a chilling new development coming, he's quoting the, this article in the New York Times, quote, almost half of the fires in the Amazon, you know, so far this year, burned pristine forest, according to data from Brazil's National Institute for Space Research. That is far from typical. It means fighting deforestation in the Amazon is no longer enough to stop the fires. Hmm. This matters because it shows that the fire control practices in some of the world's most biodiverse places are not working and that threatens myriad life, myriad forms of life, including us. And uh, I tried to get into that long article on the New York Times, but was unable to. Uh, back to Robert. From Canada to Siberia to Brazil, the world is on fire. When forests burn, they emit CO2. Therefore, wildfires convert carbon sequestering trees into CO2 belching monsters in competition with gas powered automobiles. This is global warming feeding on itself. As a result, Forest fires are getting worse. Burned out forests in 2023 topped all previous years by a record smashing 24%. And then he quotes the World Resources Institute, quote, the latest data, this is just a month old, the latest data on forest fires confirms what we have long feared. Forest fires are becoming more widespread, burning at least twice as much tree cover today as they did two decades ago. Back to Robert. Uh, global warming has turned lethal. In Brazil, a drought that began last year has become the worst drought on record, according to National Disaster Monitoring Agency, Semiden. And then he has this quote from uh, a Reuters news article from last week. In general, the 2023-2024 drought is the most intense 
long lasting in some regions and extensive in recent history, at least in the data since 1950, according to Anna Paula Kua, a drought researcher with Semiden. Uh, then we get this uh, from uh, a long article in ABC News. According to Rachel Garrett, professor of conservation at the University of Cambridge, quote, deforestation of the Amazon has led to a reduction in rainfall in Brazil, throwing the ecosystem off balance and causing a loop of drought and devastating wildfires now impacted by the worst drought in memory. This is called uh, loops feeding back on themselves. Back to uh, Robert. Global warming has become more than the mighty Amazon can handle, turning charcoal black smothering smoke. This one and only world gem directly influences global hydrology from the cornfields of Iowa to the crest of the Tibetan Plateau 15,000 kilometers away. It is literally at the heartbeat of the planet and suffering in early stages of a massive die-off. Loss of the rainforest will bring a different world, a foreign world that nobody wants to recognize. Uh, then he's quoting from the uh, Rainforest Foundation, quote, quoting from the Rainforest Foundation report, quote, according to Brazil's National Institute for Space Research, there were over 65,000 fire hotspots by the end of August 2024 the highest number for this period since 2005. Worse yet, of the fire hotspots, over 38,000 were recorded in August alone, an increase of 120% compared to the same month last year with 17,000 fire hotspots. Since time immemorial, healthy rainforests do not burn. Fires in healthy forests do not turn catastrophic. They remain low intensity and stay close to the ground, removing debris, small trees, and woody shrubs in the understory. The Amazon rainforest when healthy, is shrouded by misty fog in a warm climate with lots of rain up to 260 inches per year. But global warming has taken that, dis that description away. Recurring droughts are killing the rainforest, setting the stage for massive wildfires. NASA claims droughts come so frequently that large regions of the rainforest just no longer recover. This is not normal. In a word, it is frightening. Do you think so, Robert? Uh, then he quotes a, a report from the University of Leeds a high-end collaboration of 80 scientists claims trees in western and southern Amazon face serious risk of dying because of global warming-induced routes. Uh, 
then he goes back to this uh, long article in ABC News, which I didn't share with you because it came out kind of on the same day. You know, the last one of these I read, uh, quoting that uh, article, quote, wildfires in the Amazon are choking swaths of Brazil, Bolivia, and Ecuador, he left out Peru, with smoke leading to evacuations, school closures, canceled flights, and a dire threat to plant and animal life in the region, an estimated 20% of the Brazilian National Forest burned just last week. Uh, continuing from that article, the fires in California or the fires in Europe, those are not the same as the fires in South America. There is an enormous difference. The loss of biodiversity, says Guillermo Villa Lobos, who I've had the pleasure of interviewing, you can find that somewhere, a political scientist foca focusing on climate science uh, said, quote, forests like the Amazon are historically tropical forests, meaning that they have never burned. They have never coexisted with fire. This is terribly tragic for the ecosystem and the world. The Amazon is in its worst state of the last 50 years, close quote. Back to Robert. The statement, tropical forests never burned, tells a horrific tale that is impossible to ignore. Human activity, otherwise known as humans, Humans have lit a devastating, scorching change to nature that's, that is sparked by the advent of CO2 emissions from burning fossil fuels, which cause excess, excessive global warming, which is crushing the Amazon rainforest with recurring droughts that NASA says now repeat so often that the once mighty forest no longer recovers, no longer regrows. If fossil fuel emissions continue at current rates, the rainforest is destined to die. And the world will change like the remaking of a Hollywood science fiction film. Science fiction writers have written stories about dying planets like Dune, where inhabitants of the planet Arrakis wear still suits that recycle body moisture. I was just reading on my Ain't Gonna Happen uh, rant last night about these personal cooling devices being developed in China. Uh, for anyone wondering, does uh, reality copy art? Interestingly, Frank Herbert's 1965 novel was one of the first to take environmental concerns seriously and became a rallying point for the environmental movement of the late 60s and 70s. Now, 50 years later, fiction like Dune turns real right before our eyes. But where is an environmental movement as strong, as effective, as proactive as the 1960s and 70s on progressive legislation protecting the environment? 
for all you, you know, young generations talking about how boomers did nothing to stop this, meaning the environmental movement, it has disappeared. Alas, in the face of raging forest fires around the world, we are going backwards on environmental protection. And then at this point, uh, Robert makes kind of a glaring, uh, he, he leaves the Amazon behind. Uh, I guess he's already bid farewell to the Amazon and, and, and completely changes uh, the whole focus of the story to finish out. But I will go ahead and finish it out, even though he never mentions the Amazon again, I don't think. <coughs> anyway, we're, as at, alas, in the face of raging far as far as around the world, we're going backwards on environmental protection. For example, the U.S. Supreme Court is stripping environmental legislation of the 1960s and 1970s. Uh, this is quoting uh, from this, this uh, long report, Supremes Declare War on Wetlands. And this was from a, over a year ago. This quote, the Supreme Court is effectively axing a major component of the Clean Water Act, rolling back 50 years of wetland protection in a declaration of war against nature by changing a word, a word in the text of the Clean Water Act. I wish he had said what that word was. Uh, Seldom, if ever, will repercussions of a Supreme Court decision be so far-reaching and detrimental to life for this planet. It is a dagger strike deep into the heart of the world's most significant life source. Justice Samuel, Samuel Alito changing the text of the Clean Water Act is guaranteed to bring forth much, much worse flooding, especially along coastlines as sea levels rise from global warming. It will engender new sources of pollution of streams and lakes and bring on huge losses in biodiversity and crush the beauty of nature displaced by concrete, asphalt, and development. Most importantly, aquifers depend upon wetlands for replenishment. And then after that long quote, uh, he looks, uh, he, he takes that over to the Sierra Club. According to the Sierra Club, Quote, and, and, rem and remember, this was under the, the Biden-Harris administration. Okay, you can't blame this one on Donald Trump. According to the Sierra Club, quote, the Supreme Court decision will open millions of acres of U.S. wetlands, all formerly protected by the Clean Water Act, to pollution and destruction. Even Justice Brett Kavanaugh took exception, scolding Samuel Alito for, quote, taking liberties with congressional law. Back to Robert. Stop CO2 emissions. Yes. Stop deforestation. Yes. We are methodically killing the planet. The planet cannot count on life support coming to its rescue.
Hmm, the planet is life support, but life support is burning. Thank you, Robert Hunziker. I needed some cheering up on the the first day of my golden years to get my mind outside of my own head. Uh, I just have to go down uh, to the Amazon rainforest or in any wetland in this country, probably including the fucking beaver pond that I'm looking at from this chair. Uh, Jesus. Anyway, I'm going to get out there and enjoy the, a few hours of our uh, last glimpse of summer here on the first day of fall, the fall of 2024. Where will it go from here? Oh my gosh. What are you getting down there? Is it a chippy? Or a froggy or what? What is it? What is it, Sancho? I'm sure it's some it's some sort of some sort of rodent. What rodent of the day is it today, Sancho? I see your ears are turned inside out. Are you going to get it or not? So. Uh, the little rodent hunter. Alright. Let the fall of 2024 begin my guys <sighs>